what's up guys welcome to vlog episode 10 already 10 of these things um, today is Tuesday October 26th um, which means tomorrow would be one week I had my transplant surgery on Wednesday last Wednesday um, so we're about one week in and I just wanted to give you guys an update on how things are going um, things have not necessarily been smooth over here. Um, we've just been trying to take things as they come. And so I got here a list of four main things that have been going wrong over here that we're just adjusting with. And that's just so you can know, um, how to better keep us in prayer. Um, and yeah, you can just be aware of everything that's going on. My goal is to help really help people who are gonna go through this process to have a good understanding of this process to kind of alleviate any anxiety or fear going into it. Um, all right, so it all started on hospital discharge day, which I believe, don't quote me on my dates, I believe was Friday evening. Uh, we are getting ready to get discharged from the hospital coming to this hotel here um, and at, and we encountered some issues. Um, turns out my insurance would not cover my anti-rejection medicine, um, which was like, oh, like I kind of need that like forever for the rest of my life. Um, so that was a, a pretty big deal. Um, they, and, and the reason they wouldn't was because we are out of state in Arizona and my insurance um, covers it in California but apparently not here. Um, so that had been an interesting process. So we got stuck there a little longer, um, but we found a remedy. It's an unconventional remedy, but it's a remedy. So the hospital decided, all right, we're going to discharge you and we're gonna give you some meds for I think five days. Um, and then in those five days, what we need you to do is get one of your family members to go to your Kaiser Hospital out in uh, Ontario and get your prescription filled and then next day that to you here. Um, so the Mayo Clinic and Kaiser worked together um, to figure out that solution and um, the transplant coordinator here and the transplant coordinator there worked together and were able to make that happen. We got our medicine um, I want to say yesterday or two days ago. So the medicine is here. I'll roll some B-roll of all of this medicine. It's crazy. Yeah, that was kind of an unforeseen obstacle. We had some hints that there could be issues, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's something about just hearing that, hey, your medicine you need to not reject this kidney is not covered was just like, oh man, okay. Like, whew, deep breath, take it one step at a time. Uh, and we got that handled. So that was kind of the first obstacle we hit coming out um, of, of the hospital. Um, the second obstacle, well, Maybe I got these backwards. It's all right, you'll have to forgive me. Um, the, the second obstacle was the surgery itself. Um, I, think, I think I touched on it a little bit in the last video or two videos ago. Um, but I found this chart right here, I'll put it on the screen to kind of help you better understand what happened. So if you look at the top of this chart, it has like the old um, wrinkled up, shriveled kidneys at the top. And it has these two tubes coming down to those, which are ureters, which is going down into the bladder. And then if you look um, most of the way down, you'll see like a hip bone and you'll see the fresh kidney there. Um, and so typically that's where they're gonna put your fresh kidney. Um, but because of my previous surgeries and my abdomen and just the mess that is my organs, um, that was not able to work. And so uh, they had to do something a little bit unconventional. Um, so if you notice the, the healthy kidney down there at the bottom has the, I believe it's white, um, 
tube coming off of it, that's called a ureter. So when you get a transplant, they're gonna transplant the donor's kidney and their ureter. They're gonna put the kidney kind of down in the pelvis there, and then they're gonna run the ureter and attach it directly into the bladder. Um, but because my bladder was so uh, scarred up and messed up, um, it just didn't seem like a viable option. So what they did is they put the kidney on the other side. So it's on, the new kidney is on the left. Now I have two kidneys on the left. So if I'm walking uh, with a lean, you'll know what's up. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, so there's two kidneys on the left now. And instead of um, transplanting the um, the donor ureter directly to the bladder, what they had to do is raise that kidney up out of the pelvis area, and they had to attach the new kidney to the old ureter. So my old ureter is the tube, if you look at the top of the chart, there's like a little wrinkled kidney, and then the white tube coming down and going into the bladder. So they had to attach it to that uh, instead of the bladder because my ureter was phenomenal shape. Woo -woo. Um, so they had to do that. Um, and you know, that wasn't, that wasn't too bad. Um, but it was, you know, it was unforeseen. I, I like, I think I told you, I don't know, but I woke up and the wrong side of my stomach was hurting from surgery. And I was like, Oh no, <laughs> I was like, Oh no, what happened? Um, so that solved, um, the scar. I don't know. I'm super reluctant to show you the scar on YouTube. I don't know if people can handle that. Um, but the scar is probably about yay long and it goes kind of from um, I'd say like kind of my hip, the middle of my hip crease on my stomach left. So directly down from my belly button, right where, right where my hip crease is. And it goes up to my left, up and over to my left. Um, so it's about this big, it's in good shape. It's not looking infected or anything like that, which is awesome too. So the next day after we got discharged, we got medicine surgery figured out, we got medicine figured out. Um, Nicole is going to go get some supplies from the store and we have a flat tire on our car and it's not like that's a big deal, but I can't help at all. I can only lift up to like, I think eight or 10 pounds. Um, and it was just another added stressor. So we spent some time trying to figure that out. Um, the tire store was closed, had a big nail in it, I guess. The tire store was closed. So we ended up having to wait the next day, which means we're walking to appointments and to labs and stuff, which is not bad. It's probably healthier for me. It's probably good. It's about a, I think it's about a quarter mile walk from me from the hotel to get labs done. And it's about 0.4 miles to uh, my appointments. So it's not too bad. So I've been doing that. Um, so we had to wait an extra day, go to the tire store, and now they're shipping us tires from Iowa. <laughs> Apparently Arizona does not have tires, um, but hey, no big deal. Just another thing we could be stressing about that we're choosing not to stress about um, because hey, stress is just gonna make this process worse, you know? Um, so after that, we had uh, the infamous ER visit. I had to go into the ER for some issues. Um, I think I have some footage of that that I'll roll for you here. Hey, what's up guys? Sunday, October 24th, and I am back in the hospital. Um, we were at the ER. We got sent in due to some, how do we put this delicately? Liquidy bowels? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I think the meds need adjusting and I might need some hydration. Um, so we are here at the ER, having another go at the hospital. Um, feeling okay, feeling in, you know, pretty good spirits. Um, not necessarily wanting to be at the hospital, but uh, they're gonna be taking good care of me. And uh, Nicole has been a rock star. We already got a flat tire today. She got that changed. She got me to the ER. It was a brisk quarter mile walk from our hotel to the ER. You know, if you're walking to the ER, you're not that bad, right? Um, but yeah, she changed, she got our tire changed. She got me to the ER. She's feeding me she is awesome and let's let her tell you how 
she's feeling. Hey, it's Nicole. I'm, uh, we're back in the hospital, so mask is on. Um, we are here, John had his first bowel movement yesterday, and then ever since has been um, what they would call watery. So we are, um, we have a on-call nurse we can call over the weekend, and her name's Melody, she's been amazing. But um, I feel like I've been calling her for different issues, and she's, with this one recommended, she warned us yesterday that if he, if it kept up, that he would have to go to the ER overnight. Um, he was fine overnight, which we were proud of. Um, and then this morning he ate some cereal and took his meds and then had the same issue. So I called her and she said, okay, you guys need to go in. They're gonna most likely give it an, an IV to prevent dehydration and um, maybe do like a sample to see if there's any other issues. So they're just trying to make sure there's no no problems that we're, un, we're unsure of. So. We may be here for a bit. We may be here quickly. We don't know yet. Um, but every time you come in, you have to bring everything, all his um, data we've been tracking, all his meds, and um, snacks for my for me. He's not really <laughs> eating. I brought snacks and water. So um, I brought a backpack. Thankfully, I have a backpack uh, with all the stuff in it. But I don't know. Just a little nervous. Um, see how long we're here. But everything seems okay he's not in severe pain or anything so hopefully um hopefully it'll be quick all right that is all i don't know what to say so sorry if i'm rambling but thanks so i got discharged from the er that same evening a few hours later two movies later they had a, a tv with like on-demand movies in the er which was awesome <laughs> go mayo go mayo um yeah, so I got discharged that evening. Um, they adjusted some medications. Um, the symptoms haven't subsided yet, so that's, I think that's just gonna be an ongoing thing until we figure out um, how to remedy that, help me keep down all my fluids um, so I don't get dehydrated and it doesn't negatively affect the donor kidney. Yeah, okay, and then the last obstacle, and this is the one I think we can use the most prayer on, um, so the, the kidney I got was a very high quality match kidney for me. It was in pretty good shape. Um, but because of how the donor passed away, um, this is at least our understanding, you know, don't quote us. This is kind of what we're understanding right now. So it seems like they lost blood to the kidney when they passed away. Um, which means that the kidney kind of goes to sleep or goes dormant um, and and so what that means is when they when they put it in it's not functioning um, and we're about a week in and, and that kidney's still not working it's still they call it a what do they say they say it's still asleep it's not it hasn't woken up yet um, so the kidney's not functioning I'm not getting kind of the benefit of that kidney yet um, my old reliable 15% kidney is carrying me through still. I love that thing. It's been good to me. Um, and so, but a kidney waking up is not, it's not uncommon. It was not unexpected um, to the doctors or anyone. It's probably a little more unexpected to me. Um, I, I know they mentioned it, but it's still just like, I don't quite grasp how that works. Um, but yeah, so that kidney is still asleep inside of me, waiting to fill me with energy and clean my blood, um, supposedly. Um, so our, our biggest prayer request here is that you guys can join us in prayer that that kidney would um, wake up and start working. And uh, you know, we can really start tackling this, uh, this recovery and that would be awesome and as always it's been about a week like i shared before um, that means that our donor family has been without their loved one for a week um, my heart is still heavy for them so can you please just keep them in prayer as well um, and and hope that they can find uh, some semblance of peace in, in this time um, and yeah, hopefully one day I'll, I'll be able to meet them and give them a big hug and say thanks. 
Um, so that is our kind of obstacle update of where we are. Things aren't going perfect, but they're going okay. Um, and we, we plan on them only getting better. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions, concerns. Um, if there's any way I can be praying for you, I got so much time. Uh, appreciate it, and thanks for watching. Bye.